Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to a video which is all going to be about up-to-date economic policies and data to help you prepare as good as possible for the 2022 exam. We're going to be looking at a whole bunch of things, where the domestic macroeconomic goals are, some recent budgetary monetary policies, what the stance is, what their focus is, what they're trying to tackle, some aggregate supply side policies, as well as a few other things like where some of the Australian world economy indicators are kind of sitting, just to give you the best idea possible of what the trends are, so you can go into the uh, exam confident and also not have to hunt around for this information in various different places. Although I would highly recommend to you if you want to find out more of this information, Trading Economics is an incredible resource for all of these up-to-date bits of data and settings. So let's get straight into it. So firstly, our domestic macroeconomic goals. So our three goals are the goal of low inflation, so the general level of prices increasing at a rate of 2-3% to on average over time. Um, strong standard economic growth, which is to have the total value of production increasing at a rate of 3 to 3.5% real GDP growth per annum without causing any unnecessary inflationary external or environmental pressures. And that's um, currently at 3.6%. And then a goal for full employment, which is the lowest unemployment rate possible without causing unnecessary inflationary or external pressures, where around 4.5% of natural unemployment exists. You can also talk about Nairu in your um, full employment goal definition. So where are we at with the inflation rates? So we're currently at 6.1% for inflation and it's trending upwards. So with our target band being 2 to 3%, that is obviously well outside of that band. So it's going to be very, very important for what we're talking about with a lot of different things in this video. With strong stable economic growth, so our real GDP growth rate is currently 3.6%. and Our goal is 3 to 3.5%. So we're pretty close to that. We're a little bit beyond it, but you wouldn't really be saying that's too badly of an issue um, in terms of the achievement of the goal. What you might talk about there is because of the unnecessarily inflationary pressures, that could be a reason why you might say that the goal of strong sustainable economic growth is not being achieved right now. With our unemployment rate, so we're targeting around 4.5% and we have been at 3.5%, which is trending upwards from 3.4. So it's moving in the direction of the goal um, once again, because the goal has that unnecessary inflationary pressures, we have those inflationary pressures. So you could probably argue that all three goals are not being achieved because of those inflationary pressures. What's gonna be really important in how you talk about these in exams, if you get any questions that have the word recent and one of the goals in them, you should be talking about where the goal is currently at and the direction that it's been trending. So inflation trending upwards, growth trending upwards, and unemployment trending upwards. It's very, very important if they're trending towards the goal or away the goal from the goal and how policy is going to impact those. So 6.1% for inflation, 3.6% for annual GDP growth and 3.5% for the unemployment rate. These are all relevant as of October 2022. So all these measurements were gained in October 22. That's what they're currently at. What I highly recommend is in exams when you're talking about any data, you should date when you got that data to make sure that the person marking it knows when it's from. So if the data has changed since the date that you got it, you're not going to be penalized from that. So then getting into monetary policy. So our current monetary policy or our current cash rate is 2.6%. This has increased. So this is an increase from 0.1% earlier in the year. So there's been multiple cash rate increases since April of 2022. Um, and this is considered less expansionary as we're moving towards the neutral and contractionary cash rate. So around 3% is seen as the current neutral um, cash rate and usually above 3.5% is seen as contractionary. So if you're talking about the monetary policy stance, that should be less expansionary in nature. This is currently being used aggressively by the RBA to attempt to stem the rising inflation rate. So as we had before that inflation rate of 6.1%, which is trending upwards, they are trying to slow that down back towards that target range of 2 to 3% on average over time. The problem with this being there's an impact lag for interest rates, which means the full impact of these changes will not be seen for six months or up to two years. For example, I have a variable rate home loan, and often, although the interest rate does increase my home loan, my repayments often don't change for up to a month or two, and I don't really notice the impact that has on my discretionary income for a few months after that as I have to change spending habits. So although we are seeing how much the cash rate has increased, we haven't seen the impact of how much the cash rate's increased yet. And that's going to come into effect potentially next year and beyond. And what 
it's looking like what may happen is it may be too effective and move things aggressively in the opposite direction. Then we've got our budgetary policy. So um, a really important thing for budgetary policy for your exam is that due to the changing government, so we went from a liberal government earlier in the year when they announced the projected budget, um, you're not expected to know the stance and focus of the Labor government budget, which is going to be passed on Tuesday, the 25th of October. If you are interested in that, you are allowed to use it, you are allowed to follow it, you are allowed to use policies from it. It's expected to be a budget deficit of around $105 billion, um, which is slightly larger than the most recent Liberal budget, which was a less expansionary budget deficit of $78 billion. So that's what I recommend using at the moment because it's what you've got the most information about. Um, but don't feel pressure when there's a lot in the news around the 25th of October about the Labor government budget. That's like a week out from your exam um, or a week in a few days really. And you don't need to be stressing about that. Just focus on the stuff that's already been announced because it's still what is examinable. So some budgetary policies that you should potentially use. So in terms of discretionary changes, there's low and middle income tax offset, which often gets abbreviated to LMITO of $1,080 or $1,500 this year um, for low and middle income earners. This means there's less of a tax burden for low and middle income earners. Um, it can be used as a, tax, a discretionary stabilizer as well as a tax reform in aggregate supply side policies. So it can be used for either AD or AS side policies. And that is really useful to be able to double down on it in that way. So how this works is that it means that at tax time, uh, people get a larger tax return. This obviously increases the amount of discretionary income that households have, which will hopefully lead to increased private consumption spending and therefore increased aggregate demand and therefore flowing onto each of the goals in that way. We also have JobSeeker, which is what they rebranded New Start Allowance to, which is the unemployment benefits people receive on welfare. It had its rate doubled during welfare um, and then reduced close to the original level recently. It's increased to $633 per fortnight for singles in 2022. That's been changed in the last month or so. Um, to be as up to date as possible. So this can be used as a discretionary stabilizer when you talk about changing the rate of welfare paid, or the total amount of welfare paid can be used as an automatic stabilizer. Talking about the fact that um, during COVID there was higher unemployment rates and therefore through JobSeeker higher, a higher value of welfare was being paid overall. It can also be used as a welfare reform because the changes to welfare is obviously going to affect the labor force as welfare has recently been increased that may de-incentivize people from seeking work as they're now able to live more comfortably on welfare and therefore it may lead to more labor shortages and restrict our aggregate supply overall. Some more budgetary policies. So we've got childcare subsidies. So there's been recent increases to childcare subsidies and access to childcare subsidies. So this decreases the cost of childcare as an attempt to motivate people to return to the labor force. It can be used as both subsidies and welfare reform. So you can double down on it in aggregate supply side policies and use it for multiple questions if you want. The small business tax rate has also decreased to 25%. This decreases the cost of production for businesses. You can use that as either a discretionary stabilizer or a tax reform because it works in both ways. In terms of a tax reform, what that means is businesses are more likely to want to increase and expand and therefore increase their overall production because they've got a lower cost of production. With immigration policy, recently skilled migration was increased by 35,000 places up to 195,000 places in 2022-2023. This was used to try and alleviate labour market shortages and therefore increase our aggregate supply overall as we hopefully will be more productive if we're fulfilling jobs that cannot be fulfilled in Australia with foreign labourers or foreign workers. Then as we delve into our international indicators, so with our terms of trade, over the past two years, our terms of trade has been trending upward significantly. This means that on average, we're receiving more for our exports relative to what we receive for our imports or what we pay for our imports. So it means what's really important there with the terms of trade being that it is an index. It's the average price received for exports compared to the average price paid for imports. What's really important when you talk about it is that it's relative. So you can't just talk about export prices increasing, it's export prices increasing relative to import prices. With this, we assume that quantities remain constant, so ceteris paribus. What that means is that means we're receiving more for our exports overall, and therefore that should be favorable for aggregate demand because we're getting more credits and um, coming in or more injections coming in and less leakages going out. Then we've got our current account. So with the current account, we have 
Um, obviously, you can see it has varied a little bit, but through COVID, it has been in a surplus significantly. Um, most recently, it has started trending upwards again. Most of our current account has been fueled by low interest rates have meant that net primary incomes has less debits. So decreased net primary incomes debits from lower interest repayments on our foreign debt. Um, and then also, we've had an increase to the balance of trade over the last couple of years. As Australia's had a fairly good recovery from COVID, we've been exporting a lot more compared to what we import. And therefore, that has led the current account to be in a surplus through this time and recently an increasing surplus overall. And that's it for um, this video. Um, obviously, another thing with the current account as well is that if the current account's increasing, there should be a relative decrease in the capital and financial account. That's all for this video. If you have any other requests for videos like this or there are any other indicators that you want to know more about, feel free to hit me up, leave a comment below or send me an email, sean at therunningeconomy.com. Um, anything else that you want, I'm more than happy to help. Get in touch. I hope your um, study is going well. We are just under three weeks out from the exam. It is coming up very, very quickly. On that, I hope you're doing well. Have a great night. I will see you next time. Goodbye.